box and they're tearing down my house. Real estate is Darien's number one industry. 1961, nothing's been done. They compete very directly with McCain and, and Wilton. They seem to have a choice. That's the biggest shock factor, I think, to the neighborhood is the trees coming down. The impact of raising suburban homes towards the turn of the century hit with the same force as a track excavator itself. Debate soon followed between town officials, historians, homeowners, preservationists, and builders. This debate became front page news in the local papers of New Canaan, Connecticut. Why is this suburb of New York City significant? While many towns across the country speak of lost heritage, nowhere was this issue more prominent than in a town settled before the Revolutionary War and provided a home itself to a major contemporary style of residential architecture. Nancy Harding, a descendant of the Hoyt family, synonymous for generations with New Canaan, had her fears realized when the house that her family owned since 1770 was raised. Um, it's not fun for any of us being the generation after um, our ancestors bought it in 1750 and have been fixing it and adding on to it and loving it and uh, being born in it and dying in it. For all these years, it's, we don't, we're not proud or happy to be the generation that um, is its uh, steward at the time of its demise but we didn't seem to have a choice. But homes built in the 17 and 1800s are not the only ones in jeopardy. New Canaan now finds itself as a caretaker of mid 20th century residential modern architecture. Of the 100 or so small square footage homes built after World War II, about a dozen have been demolished. More could stand in peril. In 2005, New Canaan purchased a 37-acre private estate for park use. The Irwin Estate provided a windfall for town historians and preservationists. The property included a modern pool house, designed by one of the Harvard Five architects, Landis Gorias. After taking control of the Irwin Estate, town officials unwittingly earmarked the pool house for demolition. It was going to be torn down, which shows that perhaps we didn't do as good a job about informing people as we thought we should. Townspeople and historians, like Janet Lindstrom, realized the significance of the structure taking up the fight to save the Gora's Pavilion. And he was uh, an associate of Philip Johnson. He did the drawings um, on Philip's house and did a lot of work with Philip. In 2005, Philip Johnson, the most noted of the Harvard Five architects, passed away in New Canaan, home to his iconic glass house. Stipulations, it gets a little confusing. You know, who is a, who is a noted modern architect? I mean, where do you, you know, I didn't hear of Elliot Noyes until three years ago until they classified him as a, you know, modernist architect. He studied with Philip C. Johnson and Frank Lloyd Wright and all those guys. But his houses, you know, you look at them, no one will want to live in those today. They're just, they're just contemporary houses built 45 years ago that are pretty marginal. On the other side of the issue are the builders. Rob Purdy of Cambridge Builders conducted a tour of a home his company purchased prior to its teardown. It just doesn't make sense to renovate this house. It just makes sense to, uh, to tear it down. Cabinets. I mean, that oven is, it's like a meat TV. I mean, it's 1961, nothing's been done. And uh, obviously anybody buying the house, we're gonna renovate this and probably do, you know, would have to do a significant amount of renovation to even get this house back to today's standards. And as we go around today, you'll see that, you know, although the house is, you know, significant structure and it's still fairly straight and true, just uh, there's so much needs fixing that uh, it really needs to come down. But this is the master bath, and you can see, you know, again, by today's standards, it's fairly marginal. I mean, it's very tight. I do have a nice stand-up shower, but, you know, today you'd probably have a tub and a shower and maybe dual sinks, and 
and spread it out. I mean, the master bedroom is, is fairly big. They should have probably, you know, today they would have made this, you know, all into the closet area over there. And, uh, I mean, there's just nothing worth saving. Here. Awesome. They're tearing down my house. Well, there's nothing to do after the fact. It's only if you can do a few things beforehand. And there are some things that an owner can do, and then there are some things that a town can do that never really stops something from being torn down. But it does give people the chance for other options. I mean, we had to deal with, you know, the 15-day rule with uh, the septic letters going to the neighbors, and we had to put another 15-day uh, notice in the paper for demolition. And that's prior to getting all the soil sciences and the perk tests and where the siting of the septic system. Then we had to do a, you know, topography study, contours, uh, identify every tree on the lot. Before we vote on this, I'd just like to say that I'm strongly in favor of this. I have lived in New Canaan over 80 years, and I miss the good old days. In the spring of 2006, the Town Council of New Canaan passed a 90-day demolition delay ordinance. It's unanimous. Two aspects of the law sought to address both sides of the issue. The ordinance set up a committee charged with recognizing structures of architectural and historical significance. It also charged town officials with informing owners and developers of such structures to tax incentives, grants, and other benefits as a catalyst to preserve their properties rather than demolish them. While this was a first step to slow down developers' use of a track excavator, sobering results were delivered by Todd Bryant, president of the Norwalk Historic Trust. The neighboring town of Norwalk, Connecticut passed a demolition delay ordinance in 2004. Out of the 59 uh, requests for demolition in 2004, there were two that were protested. And both of them were demolished anyway. The bottom line in all, and I've done a lot of research on demolition delays, the bottom line in all demolition delays is they run out. And when they run out, it's, it's all over. Wonderful old architecture, not just houses that we lose constantly, and it is, it is, it is very sad, extremely sad. And I hope we can do something much more exciting, something that, that will leave to future generations. Like, this was the best we could do. Now this, we haven't done yet, we will. <laughs>